graph y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. This is a quadratic. And a quadratic, when graphed, is going to be a parabola. It looks a little something like this. Now, it could be the upside-down version, but I know it's the right-side-up version because the leading coefficient is positive. Now, this is what I know about parabolas when graphed. If I can find out what the vertex is, the left side and the right side can behave exactly the same. So that's how I'm going to handle this problem. I'm going to find my vertex, and I'm going to make a table based off of what these values are on maybe one side. And from the one side, I can get the values from the other side pretty easily. So let's find the vertex. How do you find the vertex, do you ask? Well, the vertex exists at x equals negative b over 2a, just like one chunk of the quadratic formula. So b would be u, a would be invisible 1. So the vertex would be negative, negative 2 over 2 times invisible 1. So negative 2 over negative 2 is positive 1. So the center of my graph exists when x equals positive 1. So I'm going to make myself a nice little table, okay, nice little table of x values. Okay, the center happens at 1, so I'll plug in 0, negative 1, negative 2, and plug in, I mean that in air quotes. And then I'll plug in 2, 3, and 4. I don't mean that in air quotes. All right, so at 1 is the center of everything. So let's w see what happens when we plug in y, or 1 for y. So, <clears throat> you know, just quick math. It'll be y will equal 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3. So that'll be 1 minus 2 minus 3. And 1 minus 2 is negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Okay, so I have the point 0, negative 4. I'm sorry, 1, negative 4, 1, negative 4. That's going to be my minimum value where my vertex exists. Let's try it again. Uh, let's plug in 2. So I get 2 squared, which is 4, minus 2 times 2, which is also 4. So 4 minus 4 goes away. Minus 3 is negative 3. So 2 is going to be negative 3. Now let's use a little bit of common sense. Okay, if my picture is going to look like this and I bottom out here and this guy is supposed to mirror the other guy, I know I'm going to have a point right there. Okay, so I know you're also, and if you're like, I don't believe you. All right, well, plug in zero. If you plug in zero, you get zero minus zero minus three, so it is negative three, so don't overthink it. I'm not a liar. I'm not a liar, all right? Let's try three, see what happens when we plug in three. I get three squared minus two times three minus three, so nine minus six is three, three minus three is zero, so we get zero whenever we have three. So when the x value is three, the y value is zero, which means when the x value is negative one, the y value is also zero, like so. Okay, what color did we use it, red? So let's do the same thing for four. Uh, if that fits on the graph, it should fit on the graph. Y equals maybe 4 squared minus 2 times 4 minus 3. So I got 16 minus 8 minus 3 is 5. That will fit on the graph. So when I plug in 4, I get 5, which means when I plug in negative 2, I also get 5. This is the part where I'm not going to get a pretty looking picture here. I'm going to try to graph this best I can. Okay, again, parabola, a nice smooth looking curve, like so. Bang. I'll give myself some credit. That's not too bad, except that it ended poorly there. But there you go. That's how you graph it. So you can plug in whatever values you want and see what happens, or you can use common sense, find the vertex. That'll get you your center. And once you get your center, it'll be easier to graph the rest.